WFM 91.7. It's a very beautiful Monday morning. It's uh, 8 minutes past 11 on the radio. Today is Monday, the 18th of October 2021. My name is Daniel Adaja, and you're listening to Nigeria's first and only radio station for women and their families. We are unapologetically for women. This is SME Mart, your radio business hub. And every Monday from 11 to 12 on the radio, we take our time to explore small business ventures as we provide solutions to them as this is your radio business hub. On SME Mart today, we are going to be looking at a very particular industry, which is the poultry industry. And we're looking at the poultry cri- uh, crisis, high cost of feeds, and looming hunger. And helping us to expand on this conversation this morning is the Executive Director, uh, Go Green Africa Initiative, and person of Ambassador Adeni Yishola uh, Bumi. He's going to be taking his time to help us, you know, open this conversation more and more open. Um, about 25 million Nigerian reeks job loss over the poultry industry crisis this was put out by the poultry association of nigeria have said that the current fee challenge facing multi-billion naira poultry industry may take almost 20 to 25 million nigerians out of jobs if there is no immediate intervention and the pan national president in person of ezekiel ibrahim who stated this in abuja um, during the world egg day celebration uh, appealed to the federal government to come up with policies that would assist the farmers and save the industry from total collapse. Um, several other issues have been raised with regards to the cost of maize, the cost of soya beans, which are main ingredient that make up the poultry feed. And that's why today on SME Mart, we are going to take our time to look at the poultry crisis, high cost of feeds and looming hunger. And if, you, if, you're, if you're into the poultry business, you're listening, I'm going to open the phone line much later into the conversation and you can call us up and also get to be part of this conversation. You can send us a text message too. Uh, the phone line is open. 07000917917. Our text and WhatsApp line is 0703175637. I have over the telephone this morning uh, the executive director of Go Green Africa Initiative in person of Ambassador Adeniyi Shola Bumi. Thank you for joining me this morning, Ambassador. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Y- yes, good to have you join us. I- I'm very much aware that you're currently in Abel Kuta, right? Yes. How is Abel Kuta this morning? Beautiful. Awesome. Yes. We had a short rain for this morning. Oh, okay. Great. So um, before we even go into like, you know, dealing with the crisis in the poultry industry, let, let's talk about, you know, agriculture in general and look at, you know, the current crisis we have in. Uh, for you as the executive director of Go Green Africa Initiative, how do you think the current, um, um, you know, high cost of living is how much observation have you made about it? Okay, thank you very much, and I really appreciate it. Uh, what we do at the Go Green Africa Initiative is to uh, uh, try as much as possible to educate, okay. enlighten, train, and teach you know people, most especially the younger generation and women, mm. on agri business. Okay. Now, there's a difference between agriculture and agri business. Okay. I would define that in a layman language and say that agri business simply means the business of agriculture. Now, the unfortunate thing is what we spend our money on the most and household the most are things that we don't even do at our regional level. We are in the southwest where uh, let's say southern region. We spend our money mostly on vegetables. Mm-hmm. And eighty to eighty five percent of the consumption comes from the northern region. Of our vegetables. Tomatoes, talks about pepper, hmm. talks about your onion, talks about every other thing that we spend. And also, the minimum that an household we spend on vegetable per, per week is around 1000 I'm just saying that. But most of the time, we don't really know that this is what takes our money. We think it's the rice, we think it's all those other things. But it's soup, because people need to, they need to prepare different meals, they will use some of these vegetables. Yes. But the most pathetic thing is that these things that we buy are things that you and I can grow even using our flower pot. Mm. So you have no excuse for you to produce your vegetables, especially for those that live in the mega city. Because the cost of importing this food from the northern region to the southern is massive. So, so massive. And we spend money there. Okay. So when you have when demand is more than supply, what will happen? 
There'll be high cost. Mm. There'll be high cost. But if I do pepe on my own small scale, my habanero, my small tomatoes, my small veggie here and there, okay. that will at least one way or the other help me to bridge that expense. Then I cannot look at what that thing that will be spending money on. Mm. But I don't see I don't see any solution coming on if we are not ready to embrace what we call home garden to some extent. Huh. And that is what we do at the Go Green Africa Initiative. Okay. We are like people, we train them, we teach them, we expose them to all this potential. We show them that it's achievable. And we always advocate that let us go green because it pays. Hmm. Now you you spoke about something that that I think is very key because I want to I want to speak for people who are in Lagos, for example, who live in like urban regions, who are upward mobile, maybe those who are working in the corporate sector, for example. Now you said categorically that there is a difference between agriculture and you know agri business as a whole. Now for me, who is mostly going to spend most of my time on the road or at work, I might not have that time to be able to do all of this planting. And agriculture, like you say, is, you know, is a very key activity to the Nigerian economy. And you're, you're absolutely right. Sometimes it might not be the rice, the beans we buy that is taking up the money, but actually the things we need to make soup and also to, you know, to cook with the rice, you know, something, the soup and the stew that we have to make might be what is actually taking up our money. But uh, however, with the hike in prices and right, like you rightly said also, there is a shortage in supply and that means the, for the demands to be met, there has to be an high hike in the price and that would mean that you know some people would not be able to afford this particular thing what do you think is the state of food production in nigeria yes like i told you earlier on uh production is low why the demand for 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 it is huge now the unfortunate thing the security situation of the country in almost every region is also uh, at the at the worst, you know, uh, stage, and that is one of the most and you know the dangerous thing that is affecting production. For example, down here just yesterday, uh, after church, somebody called me and said, "Sir, I am in your farm, and I can see cows all over your farm. Do you know the meaning of that? Around 4 p.m., trying to rest in my house, and cows have invaded my farm. I have two options." Take my car, drive to find 4 p.m., not thinking about anything that can happen to me, or stay, relax at home, and let whatever will happen on the feet to happen. What did I do? I have to relax at home. So the havoc has been done. If it gets to a stage, I will also be discouraged and I won't produce again. Now, if I stop production, the little I'm contributing into, you know, the, the, you know, the pool, the pool, yeah. pool we withdraw. So you can imagine how many people have withdrawn for the past three years hmm. from the northern region to the south south to southeast just because of persistent security issues. Now, 200 people produce something, it's not even enough for us to consume. Now, 100 people are doing it, and more people are still getting out of it. Not only because of security, even government intervention is zero. Hmm. So, at the end of the day, you ask yourself. Why do I need to kill myself okay. when I can actually do another thing? We are in for a very big, you know, this is a very big issue. And that is what made me come up with a campaign and like, no matter how an elite, upper mobile, whatever category you will say you are, you can still do one or two things. Really you can't do anything. Mm. Everybody can be in production. No. Mm. But what is the essence of the flower in your garden? When you can't put vegetables in those, can mm. you eat those flowers? Mm. What is the essence of most of these things we have? Nobody is saying you should cut, put dirt in your house anymore. No, we now have solutions, tech solutions, you know, that are clean and cool, hydroponics, aquaponics, different things you can do, and your garden will still look beautiful while producing edible vegetables for yourself. Is going to the, the stage whereby Yoruba people will say, Oh, you are on your own. It's going to get to that stage. Mm. Today, by this time, we should be saying, Oh, New Yam, New Yam, New Yam. New Yam is coming. How many do you have even in Lagos? Because whatever we do in the suburb or anywhere 
in the country. We are bringing it to Lagos. How many truck of yam have you been seeing recently? Is it like before? No. Things are dropping. Production is dropping drastically. Unfortunately, we are not doing anything about it. So I'm not doing anything about it. It's getting worse and worse every day. Mm. And by the time food crisis, you know, starts, that is the crisis that will affect everybody. It's a crisis that does not understand it. I think we're already in a food crisis, if you ask me, uh, because we are not, we're, we're, we're not, not yet in, you don't think you're in a food, we're we're in a food crisis yet? We are, we are, we are, we are, I think it's, we are in honeymoon. <laughs> we will soon enter into the, to the whole thing big time. Because you know, it, I've been in the industry for 15 years. Okay. I've never seen it was like we've had for three years. Hmm. Today, a bag of feed for your chicken, broiler, you know, your broiler match or whatever you want to use, the starter, is between 4,500 and 6,500. Yeah. Do you know the meaning of that? How much will you sell a 2 kg chicken? Coupled with the fact that our border is also close to poultry meat. What is going on? But because we are so rugged, we are Nigerians that we continually move until we can't move no more. That is why we are still, you know, yes, wake up in the morning and do this. Hmm. It will get to a stage that three square meals, for those that can even afford it, there's a difference between affordability and quality food. Hmm. Are we taking quality food? Now, in this country, we are talking about food. Why other developed nations are currently talking about superfood? Before you get to superfood, there is still supplement. Hello? I'm there with you. Food. There is supplement. There is superfood. Other clients are already talking about superfood. We are still talking about food on our table. It is when you eat that you will not start thinking about, oh, what are those things that can give me vitamin C? What are those things that can give me vitamin D? What are those things that can give me this? Why other nations are now talking about superfood? Protein level, this, this. How many people will now go to supermarket now and start looking at the back of the stuff they want to buy to start looking at calories? Hmm. Sir, we need to wake up. We need to wake up. And for me, the solution okay. that I see, that I think is visible, is for each and every one of us to start doing one thing or the other. Hmm. We have to all get involved. Exactly. If I, if I get you correctly, we all have to get involved. Well, if you're just joining the com- yes, if you're just joining the conversation, it is 21 minutes past 11. This is SMB Mart. Uh, we're looking at a poultry crisis, the high cost of feeds, and uh, looming hunger. Ambassador Deni Shola Abumi, Executive Director for Go Green Africa Initiative, is my guest over the telephone this morning. Um, you, you have spoken that there is need for, okay, government policies to be put in place, uh, for some government policies that need to be put in place, which I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, we can take our time to expand and look at what are these policies that need to be put in place. Uh, you said in the last three years, it's been a very big tussle for a lot of poultry farmers. And this year looks like, you know, the peak of it. A lot of farmers have come out and said that, you know, we can't keep going on this way. We need to, we need government to take us serious. And honestly, the government needs to take the poultry uh, industry more seriously than they do uh, right now. Um, a ton of maize, which is uh, which is sold for eighty five thousand naira by a year ago, currently sells for uh, one hundred and forty five thousand to about one hundred and sixty thousand naira. While the price of soybeans uh, has risen from one hundred and thirty thousand naira. Uh, now between two hundred and fifteen thousand to two hundred and fifty thousand, uh, that that's actually a lot of money. And so, like you know, like uh, the ambassador was saying, he still said that uh, we need to find how we can we can find solutions to this. Thank you for staying with us, Ambassador. Thank you. Yes. Now, I want us to look at, you know, the poultry industry generally. Uh, let, let's start off. What's your overview um, of, of the poultry industry? Have we progressed? Have we um, made efforts to improve technology-wise and even across every other form of development in the poultry industry? Yes, yes. Uh, over the period of time, we've done a lot you know, the people at the helm of the association and has really been involving, you know, looking at solutions. Um, we used to have a lot of problem around uh, vaccinations and this, but things are really changing. Hmm. But the major problem is the input. When you talk about input, you're talking about feed, you're talking about the vaccines, you're talking about, you know, other equipment that will make 
you produce healthy. Okay. For me, I'm an advocate of anything healthy. Mm. Healthy meat, healthy eggs in a conducive environment that will be available at an affordable uh, rate. But the unfortunate thing is the, the, the input that takes the bulk of the money, between 65 to 75 percent of, of, of the total input is the feed. Is the feed. Okay. The feed is not available. Mm. When I talk about availability, I'm not talking about different brands that we have in the feed production. You know, a lot of them. But affordability in the sense that can I afford it? Can an average farmer afford to feed the animal the way they ought to be fed? If you do that, then you... Because I told you the other time that the business is different from the practice. Yeah. You are going into the business for you to produce healthy meal and also have profit. Now, you know the requirement. You know the number of bags that this chicken needs to eat, the duration they need to eat these things. But when you look at input versus output, is it, is it sustainable? Is it profitable? That is where cutting of corners then comes in. That mm. is where you start hearing different things Oh, uh, additives, oh, boosters, and the rest are coming in. So that people want to just find a way of saying, four weeks, let my bed be so, 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 kg, and the rest. So the, the input, which is the major thing, the feed is really expensive. Okay. And it's not coming down. It's getting more expensive yeah. every day. I was looking at the stats. If you cannot do that, then there's a big problem. Yeah. I was looking at the statistics of, you know, the current price of maize in the market for a ton of maize. Uh, we're looking at um, over over 180000 per per ton uh, with regards to maize. And that's actually quite a lot of money. And, you know, like you rightly said to, you know, um, this is already selling at 4000 to about 5000 naira, depending on the marketplace you find yourself. Now, what can we do? This is a crisis. I was at the supermarket the other day. I wanted to buy a crate of egg. And then they told me 1800 naira for a crate of egg. I literally had to ask them that, what, are we, what is going on in the country? This used to be the price. Like, the price for half a crate used to be the price for a full crate of egg. And now I'm having to buy a full crate for... <laughs> You know, for almost two times the price I would normally buy it. And it's worrying that, you know, a lot of farmers are, are getting out of this business. What can the government do right now that can salvage the situation between now and maybe the first quarter of next year? Yes, recently I was talking to somebody about um, about this. And uh, you see, the unfortunate thing is the solution is not really available. I have to tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. What can government really do? Government has really not been a, a very strong uh, stakeholder in, in issue of uh, most of these things. Because in other clan, at this level now, you go into reserve. Um, I don't know whether we have green reserve. I don't know. And if we do, I don't know the quantity we have. At this stage, this is when government goes into the silos where we have our grain reserves and say, okay, yes, this is the so number of tons that will be released to the uh, poultry associations or okay. any relevant agency at a, an affordable price for them to have so that it will cushion the effect or the cost. But do we have that? Can government release one million ton of, of, of meat? Can government release one million ton of soya? These are the two major ingredients. Yeah. Well, I really don't see any solution if it's not affordable. Y I, I, you, you understand? You just mentioned Patron. Yes. And 150,000. Yes. Is the, what is the solution? The solution would be where can we get it for 100, for example? Where can we get it for even 130? If there is nowhere we can get that, then there's no solution. Hmm. What is the place of the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mohamed Abubakar, in all of this? Because um, if this crisis has been going on, um, the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, do you think that he's been, he has, he's capable enough of, of finding a solution to this issue? You know, the, the challenge is we, we are a country that do talk and no action. And we love to be lied to. 
if there's going to be a program on 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 agri or a, 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 a seminar or a training, you see the caliber of people that will be there. Awesome professors, doctors, and the rest. They will talk about the problem. They will talk about the solutions. Then the people that will implement the solutions will not be there. If a minister says he's capable, why is he telling us that he's capable? Why can't he ask his capability? Why can't he show us that he's capable? So, or your state, if I don't to be precise, is the headquarters of poetry. What is going on there? We are talking about one of the inputs now, which is the feed. What yes. even happens to the beds themselves? themselves? How much is a day old today? You see, we are in a very big mess. Very big mess. Let me give you another scenario. There is a video that circulated recently. Every Monday and Wednesday is when we take bed, you know, from from the from uh, Ashri. Okay. And you have Ashri in you know, Olu Yoli Estate in in in, in Ibadan, and this bed goes as far as not. It goes, you no, know, they move from Ibadan to everywhere. Day old bed, spending two days on in Odo. Hmm. Can this food survive? Road is another problem. No good road. It's like a baby. You have a baby. Just deliver a baby, and you are moving the baby from the hospital to your house, and you are in, you are stuck in an old up in a downpour without AC, without with noise and everything for eight hours. Hmm. I, I hope you are getting it, sir. I get you. You will lose some of these birds. We've not got into feed, though. It is when you put them in pen that you'll be talking about My feed. We are just talking moving them from Ashley to house, the pen. Problem. Another thing is security stopping you, roadblock from here and there. You are going to your state, you have 12, 13 roadblocks. Each of these roadblocks asking you to pay something on, on your vest. I think it used to be tax free. It is tax free almost everywhere in the world. But in Nigeria, everything I agree is like other things. You are bringing in tractor, which is implement into the country, you pay. And you know, in our, in the, everybody believe, oh, I agree, when it comes to agree, it's tax free. No! We have a lot of issues to, that we need to address and find solution to. You know, it's a system. It's not, it's not, so, it's not just a standalone issue. Feed is one of it. Is obvious. Those producing the maize are not more in the farm. Those producing the soya cannot go to their farm because of security issues. That is one. Road, bad road, that is two. Security stopping your 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 your, your, your produce coming. Not only the birds. You are bringing cassava from the farm to another place. Cassava was supposed to be the alternative. But today, you know how much a ton of cassava is? We have a lot of issues to address in the agribusiness sector in Nigeria. It's really getting worse and worse every day. And like you said, people are selling farms. Poultry farms, to be precise, people are selling off their farms. People are moving out of the farm. L- l- I want us to talk about the... Um you know, some of these interventions. I have had the opportunity to follow through on some and I've heard the complaints of, of farmers generally now, not just poultry farmers, uh, with regards to how, you know, they are unable to be, they might not be able to pay back, especially the CBN loan. I've heard about the CBN loan. I went to farmers came out to complain that, you know, they got loans from CBN, but some of them have not been able to go to their farms. Their farm have been vandalized and all of that. But what are your thoughts on some of this uh, federal government intervention? There is the farmer money, there's the trader money, there's the farmer's loan intervention. Do you think that any of these policy or any of these intervention programs have in any way impacted positively in the poultry farm industry, poultry industry? Yeah, generally, I would say yes. Good uh, government is coming up with different uh, intervention, um, but most of the time, these interventions are really not uh, well structured. So, mostly the chunk of it, 50 percent, 60 percent of it, don't really go to the right people that need it intervention. Mm. You mentioned that some people got intervention, they couldn't go to their farm. Thank God they even got intervention. What is the percentage of people that got intervention from government? Even private institutions, even banks saying they have this agree program or the other, you start filling forms, you start doing all this and you get discouraged. So those that got invitation, intervention and they can't go to their farm, that's another thing entirely. Mm. Don't forget that agriculture is also time 
paid. Yes. In Nigeria, yes, because most farmers still base on rainfall, still do rainfall and agriculture. It's just recently that we start, you know, bringing in greenhouses and some other technology. Yeah. But you can't even do, you can't even do grain in greenhouse. The volume of grains you need to do, you're talking about acreage of land, hectares of land. You can't use greenhouse for this because it's not really affordable. Now, for those that don't, that need the intervention and they are not getting it, it's another thing entirely. So it's like, yes, you are dropping, you know, you want to get a warm water and you have a kettle of, you know, boiled water that you are pouring in a bucket of cold water. Yeah. You probably might not have the warm water. Hmm. It's so, the the impact is so little compared to the problem. Giving out money is not the solution when it comes to intervention. Okay. TBN had a project um, where they also do. They know about. Oh yes, we don't want to give money because most people they don't use this money. They give input. Hmm. I mean, we all appreciate that project, but it's actually not sustainable because it got to a stage that even we too, the practitioners too, has to be blaming some of those things. For me, everything is about government. I even tell people that agribusiness is your business. It is your business. If government is giving us subsidies, intervention, we really need to say thank you to government because most of these things, when you get them, but those people that have gotten them, most of them don't even go back to pay. So by the time you don't go back to pay, there won't be a continuation. Hmm. You've gotten it, yes. Those behind you will not be able to get because you did not go to pay. So you think that is part of your own federal cake or whatever you want to call it? No. We all have a role to play in the development of our agribusiness. You got this loan, now you can't go to your farm. Are you sure you can't go to your farm or you don't want to go to your farm? Hmm. That's another question for we practitioners. Are we doing the right thing? Most things I also see is that people that get this intervention don't even have the in-depth understanding, the technical, what we call the agronomy procedure of whatever it is they want to do. They don't even know what they want to do, but they want to get the money. You don't, you don't drive a car when you don't... You don't just go buy a car when you don't know how to drive at all. At least learn how to drive before you buy a car. Okay. You don't need intervention, you don't need loans to start your agribusiness. You need these things to develop, you know, to, you know, bring up your business. The little one you are doing, you understand the whole thing that is required, you know you are doing it very well, then you can now get intervention to commercialize it, to take it to the next level. Yeah. But when you go get intervention to start what you've not practiced before, you will lose the money you, your energy will not be there, you know, and you, you get frustrated, and that is done. Hmm. All right. Government Thank is doing their bit. Everybody is trying. We are all trying, but we should leave the level of trying and move to the level of deliberate, you know, implementation. Hmm. For not for us alone, but as a country. Okay. When you cannot eat or feed yourself, you can't feed other people. You can't give what you don't have. That is why our export is reducing. What do you want to export when you are hungry? Mm. You should be able to be self-sustainable. You should be able to have enough. When you have enough, that is when you can now export. And our produce, our produce are one of the best all over the world. But the production level is getting, you know, going down every day. Every day. So if we cannot export and even bring in you know, foreign currency, what are we doing? What's our problem? Hmm. All right, we'll try to connect back. Uh, 23 minutes to 12. This is still SME Mart, your radio business hub. We're speaking uh, with Ambassador Adeni uh, Shola Bumi, who is the Executive Director for Go Green Africa Initiative. We're looking at the poultry crisis, the high cost of feed. And, uh, you know, when this happens, it means that there's going to be hunger in the land. Uh, do well to call us up this morning if you want to be part of this conversation. You want to make a contribution to what can be done uh, to be able to salvage the situation that we find ourselves currently. I'm sure you 
you all are experiencing the high cost of price of egg in the market. So um, let me know what you think on 0709179179. Or better still, you can send us a text or a WhatsApp message on 0703175637 to be part of the big qu- of SME Marts this morning. Um, yeah, still having uh, Ambassador Deni Shola Bumi. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you for having me. Yes. All right. Now, I, I want us to, to look at, you know, how we as individuals can influence some of these things. I remember specifically during Dr. Um, Adewumi Adishino's tenure during Jonathan's time when he was Minister of Agriculture. I don't know if you knew about the program called the Growth Enhancement Scheme, which was under the Jonathan's administration, which was able to connect directly to farmers. And I think it reached up to 15 million farmers. And what they were able to do was to connect farmers with high quality seeds and fertilizers. Uh, in their villages uh, that that particular time Nigeria's food production boomed and expanded by an additional 21 million metric ton but when the Buhari administration came on board in 2015 that growth enhancement scheme was scaled and can I shock you sir that the growth enhancement scheme was also more like an e-wallet scheme which was adopted in places like Togo Liberia and other African countries but yet Nigeria, where this was developed, let me state clearly that there was nothing like this around the world. And this Nigeria, where this, this idea came from, where it started from, we no longer have this, pro- this particular way. This was a medium, according to what I've seen and read, is that this particular good enhancement scheme was able to get direct contact with farmers, being able to give farmers directly what they need. Like you said, impute, not necessarily money, from um, quality seeds to fertilizers to access to low-cost tractors. What, how then can this government in itself begin to retrace its, its, its steps? Thank you very much. And one thing I really appreciate about you is the fact that you 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 you've really done a lot of research when it comes to agri um, agri sector in Nigeria, and you are really vast about it. Now, this government is how 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 many years old? This government is like six years old right now, if I if I'm correct. Yes, you are. So, and um, they have eight years, right? Yes. So, what can they do again? If we are bringing any solution now, can it be implemented? Hmm. It, c- it can be. They don't have to be continue. Um, if the eternal end doesn't mean that the, the that's the problem with our country, which I think is a major challenge. If a, if a, if a solution had been provided because it's under a different administration, if it worked, why not continue with it? We call it the pol- policy of our team. This one comes with a policy. The other person is not uh, you know comfortable with the policy. You want to come with your own policy, and this has really driven a lot of investors out of this country. Mm. Oh, today because it's not really been you know uh, business conducive. Yeah. Today you say okay, let me also flash you back to uh, the, the, the intervention or no the implementation of cassava uh, bread solution thing. You remember that? Yes, I do. The cover project. Where, yes, where where is that today? A lot of people move into cassava production. And immediately after that government left, you know, nobody is picking cassava. Cassava becomes so mm. low, the price so low, and a lot of people just move out of the uh, of production. Today, cassava is not KKK. Can you imagine? Just moving up, down. We are, we were, we can't just be stable for 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 just say two years. Two years stability in almost all aspect of our economy. That's a problem. Today is this one, tomorrow is that one. You are trying to adjust to this, then another thing is coming up. You go to Senegal that adopt that system, they are doing very well with it. You know, go to the other country that they are all doing very well. But today, between six years of this government, we've had almost three to four different, you know, programs. It got to a stage that even CBN took over the whole agric thing. Yes, they did. Implementing from their own. Can you imagine? Why do you think CBN is also trying to do that? Because they believe that the Federal Ministry of Agric is not doing, you know, what they are supposed to do. And when you push funds to this, to this, you know, place, they don't implement, they don't do it. So let's be ourselves. And that's why they came up with, um, um, I forgot the name now, that is directly under CBN. They wanted to do microfinance in, 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 the, in all the local governments. 
what is going on? Hmm. Agribusiness needs money. But not only money, it also requires the involvement of all, of all stakeholders. Yeah. Let me I'll shock you again, sir. We are talking about input now. Let's talk about household. Despite the fact that we have issue of food shortage, do you know we still have issue of food wastage? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We do not have <laughs> the storage link. You were talking about the Ancos Boros program earlier with regards to CBN's Ancos, intervention. Ancos yes. yes, Ancos Boros program. Now, what I want to tell you is, I want you, I want everybody listening to me to then look at this, please. You need something. You need something. You need 100, and you are able to get 45. Despite the fact that you got the 45, before you could get the 45, you lost another 20 or let me say 18 hmm. again or 20 out of the 45 that is being available or made available to you what is our problem we need to ask ourselves we have the problem of food shortage we still have the problem of food wastage food wastage is that not double shortage double shortage what can we do i want to throw exactly. open Sorry, I'm, cu I'm cutting your thoughts there, but I want to throw open a conversation I listened to um, a few months ago. Uh, it was a very, um, it was an extreme measure on what can be done for agriculture. And I want to know what you think about it. Um, there have been conversations around the fact that if we could privatize the power sector of Nigeria, can we fully automate the privatization of the agricultural sector, take it away from the government responsibility? Let me tell you, sir. Currently, I don't really see what government is doing. It's almost 80% driven by private sector. Whatever achievement, whatever result, the little we have is driven by the private sector. Mm. Government, I don't think there is a government or at the federal level, even at the state level, that can say, yes, I have so, 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 extra of so, 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 so produce that I'm selling at so, so, so price compared to what they are oh. selling in the open market. Local market. I, I, I tend to be corrected today in Nigeria. So I don't really see where government is being involved in, in the protein. In, is it in production? Is it in warehousing? Is it in logistics? Is it in processing or packaging? No! I don't see any area across the value chain that the government is involved. They're just paying leave service. Whatever we are getting today are from the private sector. So for me, it's already privatized. Mm. Because what do you want to privatize? Yes, you can say electricity because this code, that, 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 you want to privatize. The refinery wants to privatize because the structure or the system is this. Name one that we want to privatize when it comes to agriculture. What? Is it fertilizer production? We say project is for producing fertilizer. Mm. If we give it to individual, do we have any rice mill that belongs to a state that is working? Lagos State has a proposed... Has um, uh, um, the, uh, the biggest um, rice um, this thing in Imota how many volume are they producing the mill in the southwest how many ok we can't even blame Lagos State because no land to plant no but Lagos State has it Lagos State has a partnership with Kwara State I'm very much aware of that I think yeah. where they get what they give I'm access about 10,000 farmers Sal, what I'm trying to say what is Ogun doing why not partnering with Lagos Supreme Party what is Ekiti doing? Most Ekiti also have refinery, uh, has, has his own rice meal. Why do we always have to have everything? Mm. Why do I need to compete with you when I can compliment? Because when you put your meal in Ondo, in Oshun, in Ekiti, and you produce your party, and you meal it, where are you selling it to? 50% of it will still go to Lagos, yes or no? Yes, sir. And Lagos has a meal, that, but there is no party. Why can't you concentrate by producing paddy in exchange for grain. And you take that back to your state and subsidize. What is our problem? What is the color of our problem? <laughs> You know, I agree with what you're saying now that there is need for a partnership among various state governments. Um, but we can't take out the fact that there are human factors to these things. The fact that, you know, we every four years we change administration. We literally are not working with a blueprint on how having a sustainability plan. I think this administration is one of the first to talk about, you know, by 2030, we want to see how we can get 100 million people out of poverty. And that's like a futuristic plan. And doesn't mean that they have to be empowered to that time. It means that they're trying to 
laid out a plan. And we have not been doing that enough for agriculture. And like you rightly said, the agricultural system in the country is largely run by a lot of private individuals. And we still have over, we have over 25,000 hectares of land that are arable lands that can be used for various things that we are not using at the moment. By the time you go near those lands, you know that they have owners. <laughs> mm. All those lands have owners. Now, for, for I know you will have traveled. You see, let's talk about South Africa. Let's even talk about South Africa. Okay. When you are driving from the airport, you know, even almost all parts of, of the world, even Togo here, yeah. when you are driving on the express, on the major road, yes. your right and left are always literally follow for, for agriculture. In Togo, you will see vegetables. You see cabbage, lettuce, carrot on your left and your your right. Yeah. If you're coming from uh, Kotonu going to Togo, you see these vegetables. Massive. Government will always reserve this size of land beside the road and then demarcate them into hectares and give to people. Okay. You know, water will be there for irrigation. You know, the power supply is superb and at a very affordable cost for them to power their their pumping machine, hmm. the same thing in South Africa, just name it, you see green there and there. Please, can you please tell me, you will have traveled across 36 states of this country. Can I saw something close fresh? to that in Uyo, but I don't think it was functioning. There was, if you're driving from the Uyo's airport um, into the okay. into the city, there's like, I think there's some greenhouses on the left and on the right, but oh. while, while I was there, it looked dry. Awesome. You see, we really need to change the narrative. Land not our problem. I keep telling people the readiness, the willingness, then understanding that this is a business that can change, you know, our all this bad narrative we have. Look at Netherlands. What does Netherlands have? And they are one of the highest exporters of agri in the whole world. One of the highest. Hmm. What is the size of their land? It's not about land anymore. Look at our university. Let's start from all the federal universities. There is no federal university in this country today that is sitting on less than, let me just say, 80 to 100 hectares. No mm. one. No university. Do you know the meaning of that? Now, when you talk about the structure, the structure will just be on around 5 hectares or 10 hectares. What is happening to all those larger sense of land, lying fallow? Let me shock you. Most of these lands are already fenced, too. Mm. So when we are saying security, security, if you are not doing your project within a fence environment, at least you've been able to mitigate the issue of security. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Let's come back to state investors or institutions now. It could be poly, it could be Ministry of Ed, um, um, Education, College of Education, whatever. None of our institutions at the state level sit on less than 50 hectares. Do you know that it takes 8 meters by 30 meters uh, it takes around 12 of 8 meters by 30 meters greenhouse, 12 of it on an acre. 12 of it on an acre, that means, and you have 2.5 acres in an hectare, 12 by by 12 by 6, that is 30 greenhouses. Size 8 meters by, you know, 30 meters on an hectare. Do you know what that will produce? The volume of Habanero pepper it will produce, the volume of bell pepper it will produce, the volume of tomatoes that will produce, the volume of onion that that one hectare will produce. Hmm. You know, just before I let you go, I, I because of our time, there are a lot of people who have the passion, they, they have the zeal, they've most likely acquired the skill. All they need is a push to start. How do we not allow all that is going on, discourage them from deciding to venture into agriculture and the but business of agriculture. It's a business, it's a very sustainable business. Mm. Despite all the challenges, I told you I've been around for over 15 years, we are doing excellently well. Just last week, we signed an MOU uh, with a company in UK for us to supply them a banero pepper. And if you come to one of our farm here today, we are doing very well. A lot of people are coming in into the business and they are doing fine. The first thing you need to know, you have passion. Even if you, if you don't need passion, sometimes I say passion does not put food on your table. Mm. It's not about passion alone. You have the money and you want to invest. You need to look for sustainable projects, you know, that is working and see where you can come in. For me, I'm not a fan of all these get-rich kind of projects where somebody is promising you things that are not sustainable. 
I do investment, but I can't say I'm going to be giving you 30% per annum. No, because it's not achievable. Mm. But most Nigerians want to say, oh, give us 40% per annum. Uh, give us 50% per annum. In agribusiness, is a delayed kind of business. The initial stage is the foundation stage, where everything must be right. The moment the foundation is not on the right you know, shape, you will look... Oh... Um, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to quote you back, uh, Ambassador, but it, it's been a very good time speaking to you this morning, uh, Ambassador. Network just didn't allow us to wrap that conversation properly. But I, I want to appreciate you for your insights this morning and, you know, just exposing the lapses that we have and showing us how much we still have to do. Uh, the government has a large responsibility in ensuring that we make the agri sector better. It has a more responsibility in ensuring that there is no hunger in the country. Our food sufficiency level is really poor, and I'm not sure how much time we have left to correct this. But I'm hopeful. I am hopeful that you know the country would get to a better place. I am hopeful that you know security, um, insecurity, and insurgency will become a thing of the past. And I'm hopeful that we will return to an era where food, uh, food, uh, agricultural produce would be available. Like, you know, the ambassador said this morning, Adini mentioned, he says we, we have two major problems. We have a short, shortage of food, of agricultural produce in the market. We also have a problem of storage of agricultural produce. And these are two major crises that still need attentive solutions to it. Well, if you find yourself in a space where you can provide solutions to these issues uh, to government and get proposals across to the right people and get them in the right corners, I'm I'm 100% behind you. This is SME Mart. Feel free if you want to showcase your products and goods and services on SME Mart, just send us an email, info at WFM917. And to every young farmer out there, I seriously, I encourage you not to give up. I encourage you to keep striving. I know it's tough. I want you to keep working. Ensure that you're safe. Please, your security is very, very important. And let's ensure that we encourage every farmer out there. Let's buy Nigerian produce. Let's go to our local markets. Let's go to the local market itself. I'm not trying to discourage store um, supermarket or store owners, but let's go to local markets because some of these people depend on this daily money to be able to survive and to feed. So if you have plans to go to the market, go to the local market in your community in your area um buy from these people and let's this market people too are farmers let's keep these prizes i know it's tough but let's not over um you know use the fact that you know every day is a high cost of inflation they were like you go to the market you hear things like april t1 you know fell have go up you know and dollar t1 that kind of thing so Let's not use that as an excuse to inflate prices unnecessarily. Let's also help ourselves too, as we want to help you too. All right. It's Women Radio 91.7. At 12 is the news. And at a quarter past 12 is the big question.